Hey Scott. Cool. Um, this interview is for the MSP program. I'm going to ask you some general questions about uh, your area of expertise. And um, what are, in your opinion, the most biggest, the most impressive changes to the ASP.NMVC3 mm -hmm. in regards to ASP.NMVC2? Mm -hmm. So, people have noticed that we are revising MVC quite quickly. It's a, it's a very agile project, it's run in an agile way. It's coming out faster than, than, than ASP.NET Web Forms, and that some people have felt like, you know, it's coming too fast, soon it will be four, and then five, and then nine, and da, da, da. Uh, it's, it's a number of incremental improvements that make it uh, better, in some instances dramatically better, but um, we're moving forward on a number of things. We're trying to make it more fun, we're trying to make it more dry. We use the term dry. Don't repeat yourself. Uh, and we're trying to make it productive. So the big change is, is Razor. And Razor is a new syntax for creating web pages. It's a domain specific language that, that uses the things you already know. If you already know HTML and you already know C Sharp or VP, then Razor is a very, very lightweight syntax. Not a new language. It's not a new language, but it's a syntax that allows you to more comfortably switch back and forth between MVC, back and forth between HTML and code. Before in web forms, and which was the default view engine in MVC2, it was very dramatic to have markup and switch from here's some code, here's some HTML, and here's some code. It, 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 it always felt like you were torn between two worlds. With MVC, the transition is very light as you move back and forth. It's a friendly, lightweight uh, way to make views. So that's a new thing, and that's the default. You can still write web forms views, but Razor is the default. So that's a big thing. Lots of improvements around jQuery and JavaScript, particularly around validation. You can have really light, clean Java, um, JavaScript validation using jQuery, what's called unobtrusive validation, which uses a, a kind of HTML5 data attribute to hold validation. There's improvements in the tooling, there's a new file, new project dialog, there's new um, dependency injection stuff. So it's a bunch of little pain points, things that hurt, that don't hurt anymore. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, you also mentioned web matrix. Um, what we basically want to know is what impact will web matrix have on the current web development scene? Like, will there be more casual people that can make tiny little home pages for themselves, mm -hmm. or well, I hope so. I mean, for student for student partners, for uh, for students for people who maybe aren't a computer science person, but they are you know kind of technical. If you've made a WordPress site, if you know a little HTML, if you're thinking about getting into programming, the the barrier to entry has been kind of large. I mean, you have a basic computer and you say, I want to start writing programs. Well. Install Visual Studio. And that's that's a big deal. That's kind of scary. Uh, as you saw in, in the keynote that I gave here, WebCamps, WebMatrix is a little eight megabyte application. It's very lightweight. File new project, push run, and you've got a website. So if, I hope that more hobbyists, more students, get into it. And what's nice about it is that there's a clear path to moving to ASP.NET MVC. So if you outgrow Razor you can take a lot of that knowledge and a lot of that code with you. You can share the helpers, you can share the views, and you can move that over to MVC. Um, I tried to get my wife writing Razor pages. It wasn't too successful, but it could have happened. Yeah. Um, the idea behind the Razor syntax in MVC3, mm -hmm. the, well, what's, what's, what's the, I, what inspired your team to create a new syntax? Mm -hmm. The, the general idea was that there's too much friction in creating pages. There's too much effort. It's kind of a, we have a saying, you know, death by a thousand cuts, tiny cuts. You know, you're, you're trying to make a really complicated website. You're trying to use HTML5 and new features. You've got a lot of JavaScript. The current syntax for web forms is great for web forms. It's good for, it's good for controls. But for MVC, you really need fine-grained control over your HTML, and the, uh, there was too much friction, it was too busy, it was too visually busy, and it was too mentally busy. 
So they, they wanted to come up with, uh, with a syntax that didn't get in your way. So that they looked at markup to code transitions. They said, here's a basic for loop. How many times do I switch back and forth between HTML and code? And in web forms, in a basic for loop, you switch back six times just to do three lines, just to do a for loop and make a list. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Six times. For Razor, it's two. So it's, it's about friction-free development and, and, and a, more a more enjoyable experience. It's more fun. You have to try it, but it, it's, it's so lightweight, it doesn't get in your way. Okay. Um, well, maybe it's a bit early for this question, but do you already know of any shortcomings in the SPC3 that you'd like to see fixed or added? That's a really, that's a really good question. Hmm. I'm always looking for things to keep the code dry, keep from repeating myself in the code. I haven't seen any shortcomings in MVC yet. I would like more people to make libraries on, and put it into NuGet, which is our package manager. So for example, there's still some times when I want to install some open source project and I, I have to bring it down and kind of manually connect it to, to my application. I think I'd like more flexibility. I'd like to be able to go and take third-party controls and more, more jQuery controls, grids and trees and accordion views and things like that. So I, I would like even more JavaScript support. I don't know if that's a shortcoming of MVC or maybe we just need a little uh, more tools. But honestly, if the developers of all these different open source projects can get together and create these packages that fit into the NuGet package manager that allow me to bring them into MVC, that reduces friction even even more. Um, Katrin did a piece on HTML5. Mm -hmm. um, what's your opinion on HTML5? I think I think it's funny that everyone looks at HTML5 as a monolith when it's really a, a collection of things. I mean, HTML5 includes CSS3. You know, HTML uh, HTML5. I, I don't even know why they put a version number on it. It's HTML. And I think that, that's, that that comment has been said by people in the standards industry too, that it, it's pretending that HTML5 is the answer and that it's going to arrive and we'll be able to like check our watches and say, and it's here, yay, HTML5. People ask the question, when can I do HTML5 in ASP.NET? Yesterday. And, you know, we may not have explicit tooling in certain places to do it, but we're using the data attribute. Uh, in, in, in ASP.NET MVC3, if you want to output a video attribute, you can do it. There are open source HTML5 helpers for, for MVC. If you want to add some of the custom attributes in web forms, you can do that now. I mean, ASP.NET Web Forms 4, you can write HTML5 like that. HTML5, we're, we're attaching too much meaning to it. It's more than just the syntax. It's also the style of application. Right? Don't, when you think HTML5 application, don't you think about Ajax and client-side JavaScript and, and, and animations and things like that. I mean, that's, yeah. that's a lot bigger than just a spec. Plus, with this mess with the video tag, I mean, who knows when HTML5 will be here. Um, uh, the MVC3, how does it compare to, well, not really existing, like an MVC framework for .NET has been around for a while, mm -hmm. but how does it compare to already other MVC frameworks such as um, SEMP, like in terms of ease of use, uh, functionality that's included. How do you think that MVC3 compares to the others? So you like, like using like Zen and Django and yeah. Rails and things like that? <coughs> I think that when you say I have a web development framework and uh, it's fun to use or it's productive to use, there's a couple of things to think about. There's the tools. There's the framework itself, and then there's the language that you're using. So you can't you can't ascribe all of the good or the bad to one part of it. Like for example, if you're doing you know Rails without an IDE, you know some people find that very very nice, but other people want more help. So some people find Visual Studio and the fact that it helps you, that it's got IntelliSense, that it's got tooling for creating views and scaffolding, they like that. So I think that's pretty cool. I think we have we have the edge when it comes to an integrated IDE. If you'd like an integrated IDE, if you'd like you know, debugging and multi-threaded debugging and IntelliTrace and all these kinds of features that you get 
tooling, we're doing great. Um, on the language side, C Sharp 4 is way better than C Sharp 5 because of some of the changes, like the dynamic keyword. I, I know it's just now people are starting to get used to it, but not enough can be, it has been said about how nice it is to have a strongly typed language, but also dynamic at the same time. You may have seen in the presentation when I had dynamic views and I was just passing. It, 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 C Sharp can feel more like idiomatic Ruby. It's not, but it's enough that it gives you the pleasures of a dynamic language and the flexibility of a dynamic language with some of the strengths of a static language. So I think we're doing okay on the language side. There's a couple of things I'd like to do differently. On the framework side, things that we're working on in the future, things like migrations, I think that we're a little weak on. Migration, I mean database migrations. What happens if I add a column to a database or move something within my database? And the Entity Framework team is actually asking the community for feedback right now. And you can go to their blog and learn about that. We now have three ways to make a database. Database first, entity model first, or code first. Code first is really exciting and puts us more in line with the other, the other frameworks. So I think we're a little weak on migrations, uh, but we're getting there. And uh, scaffolding, the, the ability to quickly make a site, that's one of the things that Rails showed five years ago. When they very first came out, they were able to say, make me a whole site. And uh, some of the work that Steve Sanderson is doing and the folks in the web platform team uh, to create sites quickly and in a way that will allow Microsoft developers to have a lot of flexibility, uh, I think will help us uh, catch up. So I, I think we're closer than we've ever been. Okay, i got one final question. What are you looking forward to the most in 2011? I'm looking forward to the most. <laughs> It may not be developer related. My, my, my son going to kindergarten. <laughs> I mean, with all of these things, you really have to put it in in, in perspective. You know, this is this is an enabling technology. All of these technologies enable us to hopefully spend more time with our families. Like for example, I will be happy if more people learn MVC and feel that it is giving them more free time. Yeah. You know, or if they like some new feature that we've come up with in, in Visual Studio that says, "Wow, this used to take." Four days, and now it takes two, and I am more productive, and now I can see my kids more often. You know, I don't want to make software that causes people to have to work harder. There's, what's that joke they say about no one uh, is on their deathbed and says, "Man, I really wish I worked more." So we're trying to find technologies to keep people from having to work so hard. But that said, uh, I'm looking forward to uh, updates to Windows Phone 7. You know, we're going to have some more updates coming in the spring. Mm -hmm. I'm really interested in i9. I mean, I want to see if we're going to pull this off, right? I run Firefox 4, I run um, the dev branch of Chrome 10, and I've got um, Opera 10 on my machine. If you look at my taskbar, I've got all four of them. I want to see if we can do it, if, if i9 and HTML5 is really going to happen this year or not. So I'm, I'm interested. Uh, I, I have no opinion either way because I don't work for that team. But, uh, you know, I, I hope that we have a good, competent browser that I can, you know, go to my mom and say, yeah, upgrade to i9, it's good. Yeah. We'll see. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much, I really appreciate your time. Yeah, you too.